Hi, welcome back. My name is Brandon. I'm with Teva Corporation. Uh, I'm here with Mark Coots, the president of Teva Corporation. Uh, today we're going to talk about phosphorus. There's a lot of noise in the marketplace about which is better. Uh, should we broadcast? Should we do this? Should we do that? Hopefully we can help uh, alleviate a little bit of those issues and maybe provide some clarity on that. Um, first of all, let's start out with the difference between what MAP and DAP actually are. Uh, can okay. you explain that? Yeah, so MAP is, you know, the older form of phosphate that we used to use and we've kind of gotten away from it. But really the, the big difference is, is MAP is one phosphate molecule and one ammonia molecule, where DAP is one phosphate molecule and two ammonia phosphate or two ammonia molecules. So that's the difference. One has just got one and one, and one's got two ammonia and one phosphate. And then, um, what kind of difference does that make whenever you're talking about the soil getting involved with that? Okay. Well, what happens there is they break down differently in the soil. So your map will break down into the acidic form. So when you spread that, broadcast it or band it, whatever you do, where each one of those pellet lands, it breaks down acidic around that uh, pellet. Versus where you use DAP, when it breaks down, it breaks down on the alkaline side of the, of the pH scale. So on MAP, you're breaking down acidic, and on DAP, you're breaking down alkaline. So that can affect your, your soil life because on the alkaline side, you know, on the saltier side of the scale, it can affect biological life then. And so what the ultimate goal is, is to get the plant to actually use the phosphate. Um, what's the difference between the two forms as far as your, your phosphate uptake that the plant's going to do? Okay, well, th what happens then, because the MAP is on the acidic side, it breaks down into a different form mostly than does the DAP. So the soil, uh, phosphate is taken up in the soil in two forms. One is in H2PO4 and the other is HPO4. Okay, research has shown that the plants prefer to be taken up from the soil in the H2PO4 form. Well, the acidic side of things on MAP breaks down more into H2PO4 than the HPO4 that the DAP breaks down into. So you'll actually get more phosphate taken up available to the plant in the MAP form because of the way it breaks down in the acidic soils and everything. So there's also going to be effects on your micronutrients. Um, what are some effects that we're, that we're going to see between uh, the MAP and DAP getting involved with microbes? Okay, same thing, back to our pH situation. So as you guys mo know that most of our nutrients are more available on the acidic side of the scale, you know, on the on that side of the pH scale. So that means your, you know, your zinc, your borons and things like that, manganese, all those trace minerals, most of them are going to be more available on the acidic side of the form. So MAP breaking down more acidic than what DAP does, then that means that you're going to get, you should get more availability of, you know, micronutrients, you know, using MAP versus DAP. And then what about your crop considerations as far as one, one thing to the next? Yeah, the biggest thing there is, is is a crop that needs nitrogen. So MAP only has one molecule of ammonia where DAP has two. So if it's a, if you're going on <laughs> corn or, on uh, wheat or any of those hay crops or whatever it might be that needs nitrogen, then DAP is you know going to give you more nitrogen in it where MAP would not. But if you're going on a crop that is like soybeans, alfalfa, any legume crop that needs phosphate, then you're going to be better off of MAP because you're not putting out some nitrogen, you know, that excess nitrogen that may hurt your nodulation, you know, and the plant's ability to do its own forming of its nitrogen. So it just be the consideration there. My thinking on the whole thing is that I would prefer to use MAP in any case because we're, we're putting it out for the P. We're not putting it out there for the nitrogen. It's going to be more expensive than just putting regular, you know, extra nitrogen on your corn or your something like that. So I would, I'm putting MAP or DAP out there for the phosphate, so I'm going to put it out there in the most available form. Okay. And then we've also, uh, I've seen some guys actually do a water solubility and, and things. And MAP, of course, we've seen is more water soluble. Um, but with the water soluble, it also comes down to how close can we get it to our seed? Um, how does placement figure in all that? Yeah, so there's a lot of research now that's starting to come out. And I think it's just some food for thought for guys. But if you think back in the day, 
our dads and grandpas, you know, they did deep placement back early on, you know, it was right on the planter or whatever. We got away from it because we could go to broadcast, it was easier, stuff was cheap. But now in this day and age when fertilizer and inputs are becoming more expensive, we need to think about placement. So if you guys have ever watched our liquid versus dry, you know, we talk about broadcasting and things like that. So if we could start deep, you know, in that, we talk about the liquid being so much more available because of its placement. And that's the same thing with, with this. So if we're gonna put it, if we would deep place it, and we mean by that maybe three to six inches right under the seed versus broadcast, your availability of the, of the nutrient is gonna go up considerable to the plant because it's placed in a zone that the, you know, the roots are gonna be growing through. The other thing is it's got less soil contact so it can be tied up by less, you know, if magnesium is high or some of these other nutrients it wants to tie up your phosphate, you know, it's got less contact with it so therefore you would have better efficiency out of it. And the third thing is because we're putting it in the row and it's more available, you can get away with using a little bit less material than when you're broadcasting because you're more efficient with it and stuff. And I think, uh, Brandon, didn't you have some guys this year that run some test trials on that? Yes, um, we, we did have some farmers that did multiple tests and with having it banded, it was anywhere from 15 to upwards of 60 bushel on corn, um, which Yes, there is a little bit more effort involved, but that's a pretty good payoff, I would think. Yeah, and in those tests, uh, the only difference was the broadcast versus uh, banding. There was no other variable in there to get those big differences. So at this day and age, yeah, I, I take an extra 60 bushel an acre for a little bit more effort. Yeah, um, and when it comes to your placement, of course, we've already talked about in the past videos your broadcast versus liquid and such. Broadcasting still, still seems to be the least effective. Then, of course, you have your banding. And then the most effective we've still seen is going to be your liquid. Um, thanks, Mark, for clarifying that. And thank you for joining us. Um, again, if there's any questions that you all have, feel free to reach out to myself or Mark or anybody that you've come in contact with our company. If you have not been in contact with our company, visit our website at www.tivacorporation.com. Go to the contact page and let us know. Again, thank you and have a great day. Thanks.